You guys ready? I finally did it. I was so lazy for so long, but I finally spent three days and I set up the brand new tank. Are you ready for the big reveal? All right, here you go. So my guy Dustin, who comes in once a week and does water changes and water tests, all the tanks, was out this week, so I needed to do the water testing myself, so I did. Yesterday I tested pretty much everything. Look, look here. This is where I keep on my water test, all right? Check it out. So I have four tanks, well now five tanks, okay? And here's what I tested yesterday, and oh my goodness, you gotta check this out, this is so awful. Seahorse tank, right? Nitrate, 8.5, PO4, 0.22. Let's go check what this last seahorse test was right here. Seahorse, eight, so almost exactly the same. So not a big deal, I still need to get those numbers down, but it's an algae tank, so it doesn't really matter. Reef tank, look at this. NO3, 16.5, not terrible, but what? Look at that BO4, 0.57. And when I tested this last week, reef tank was 12.6 and 0.2. And if we look up here to the reef tank, 0 0.01. So that needs to be dealt with immediately because I'm gonna get algae growth everywhere. And then look at the harem tank, 4.7 and 0.35, like what? So look, okay, when's the last harem tank test? What was it? Zero. Zero. I mean, I can tell you exactly what happened. Well, what happened? Oh, sorry, my puppy. Well, hold on, she, hold on one sec. She needs to play. She's demanding playing. But seriously, exactly what happened. I can tell you exactly what happened. Right here, this bad boy right here. I took the GFO off because I added a brand new protein skimmer, which you can't really see very well. And then over here, I took the GFO off because I'm like, the bio load's not that much anymore because almost all of the clownfish are redispersed to other tanks. But man, something's going on. So the first thing I need to do, I think, no, I know, is I need to put GFO reactors back on them, and I hate running GFO reactors. Let's go do that real quick. I have a few, okay, I think I have a few GFO reactors. No, I only need one, but where, I think this mini one will work. So I have an adjustable flow, which I need for the GFO, and then I think I just use this pump. Oh, that pump is huge for this. What is this? 1.5, that is way too big. I thought I had, oh, I can use this one here, here, this one, this one. Perfect size pump, so. Tank, ugh, it's gonna have to set up on the side. There's one. I hate changing these things out. I just grab these. Y'all. Then, wait, just grab the GFO. Ooh, is that it? Is that, that's what I need right, right here? Just the GFO? All right, good. Rinse her out with some RDI water. Let's do that. Uh, number one. We'll do this really fast. Off the wall. Number one done. Number two. The ugly one. Number two. Done. Wait, let me let me tell you the story of this. Ridiculously inexpensive pump. I hate vibrations and pumps because our bedroom is on the other side of that wall and my head is literally like up against the wall and so what ends up happening is I can just hear the vibrations. Now normally it doesn't bother me, but I came in here the other night and I went to bed and I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? It's because I set up the new tank and the new tank just has some sort of standard AC pump. And I had the same problem like a week ago with this one. Actually, I've had this problem with the harem tank forever. And it was so loud, and I would stand here, and all I would hear was, and depending on like where the hose was, it would like rattle the inside of the sump, and then it would like somehow reverberate throughout, and it felt like it was like in my jaw and in my ear. So I was like, you know what? I have an extra Varios 2 DC controllable pump, and I'll replace that, and I did, and it's virtually silent, virtually silent. Now you guys can't probably hear the humming right now because I erased the humming in post-production. So here's what it sounds like with the humming, now without the humming, with the humming, without the humming. The other humming you're hearing is from the brand new tank with the ridiculously loud AC pump. So I was like, I'm just gonna go buy another, another Varios 2, and I was like, you know what, Matthew, that's like $270. I used to have this really cheap one that I got on Amazon that was like $120. It was a, a, a DC, some sort of Chinese made return pump and it worked fine. So I'm like, let me see if I can find something cheap. And so I got this one from 
or Lushi. This was, I think, $75. $75, $200 less. And the ratings are fine. So I'm gonna install this on the new tank and I am hoping it will cut those vibrations down. We'll see though, I mean, a $200 difference, This there's just no way this is gonna be as good, right? Here's the old pump, this is the old pump, Matthew. Listen for the vibration. And we're gonna turn it off, ready, here we go. Look how quiet it is. Okay, super quiet, here we go. We're gonna do it again, here we go. Turn it back on, here we go. I mean, I am not crazy, right? That is crazy loud. And this new $85 pump has to be good. If it's good, I'll put a link below. If it's not, I won't put a link below, all right? Okay, I'm not doing any unboxing here. I just wanna take it apart for you guys here. 4,000 liters per hour. How many gallons is that? Hey Siri, 4,000 liters equals how many gallons? 4,000 liters is 1,000. Okay, it says it's waterproof. I doubt that. I have my experience with these pumps, these cheap ones, do not run them outside the tank. They almost always leak. Look, I mean, it comes with a controller. Oh my God, it comes with all these. It's gonna be one of these two. It's gotta be one of these two. Gotta be one of these two. Let's go with the bigger one. Pop it through. O-ring, huh, O-ring. I mean, it should be as easy as that, right? Please be easy, please be easy. Turn pump. Ah, oh, see, this is a good one. This is a CJ. It's a CJ Synchro. I love these things, but it's just so freaking loud. It's gonna be, ugh, I don't even have a towel. Matthew, come on. Oh my goodness, Matthew. Okay, I should have remembered this was a DC. I just cleaned it. Oh, in the face, Matthew. I and mean, this should be as easy as this. All right, oh my God, this should, could this actually be this easy? It's gonna be loud. Oh, I hope it's not loud. Oh, this works. Blessed day. It's ready. Here, you ready? It's pumping, I don't want to pump. Sounds amazing so far. Oh my goodness team, <laughs> $85, controllable DC. I can't speak anything about its longevity. I literally just installed this thing. Totally controllable, I have it at 15, it goes, it goes like one to 20. Here we go, here's the sound test. I'm gonna turn it around, here we go. Here's what it sounded like before. Here's what it sounds like now. Before, now. Completely silent, and not only that, if like a little tiny adjustment, and then it goes in the overflow, and a little tiny adjustment the other way, I mean the, the emergency overflow, and a little tiny adjustment the other way, you can hear the air sucking sound, but with this, you can get it tuned in, and then just like use a number, like up one, up down one, and then it's silent. No joke, guys, or, or Lushi, you know, multiple different sizes. This one was, Crazy cheap. I, th I literally think it was like $75. Amazon Prime, free shipping versus $275 for my others. I'm not saying this is gonna last as long. It's probably not gonna last as long. It probably has leaks to it. It made my tank silent and I saved $200. Oh, oh yeah, here. I'm so glad I had this lying around. This is this is like the Prism ATO right here, see this? I have been using the EXO ATO, some reef breeders for a long time, but the one I have installed on the new tank is, is it's, it's just not working. The sensor's not working. I've reset it multiple times. So I'm gonna use this one instead. This one's cheaper anyways. The, the other, and if you don't know, the, the other one, the, the EXO, the, the reef breeders EXO, it has to go through the glass. So you can't put it on like a darkened panel because it has to read through the glass. But this one, here, I'll show you. This one just has this, see this? This is all it is, right? Right here. And so you put the little magnet on the outside, like this, on the outside, and then it reads it into here. And this is only like, I wanna say like 80 bucks or something. It's really inexpensive. And I'm using it on two of my tanks right now. Works just fine. Well, that's installed. I, I just don't wanna spend all day doing projects. It's Saturday, I need to edit the video. I'm heading to Las Vegas tomorrow to do some B-roll filming and meet up with a friend of mine. So, do you remember in the beginning, I gave you a little tease, here's the brand new tank. Well, actually, let me show you the brand new tank now. So here you go, the grand reveal of the brand new system.
All right, enough of the B-roll. Here you go, little water box, Reef 70. I think it's called like the 70.2. I don't even know if they make this one anymore. I got this one from my neighbor. Came with the older AI Prime lights. These aren't the HDs. And what I decided to do, after all the suggestions, which are wonderful, by the way, is I'm making it a Fabler tank. Now, I may end up putting some soft corals in here, but my big goal here is I'm going to get a... a a Toby Pufferfish is number one on the list. Then I want to get a whole bunch of smaller fish that you don't usually see in a reef tank. I don't know what, maybe some kind of schooling goby or something like that. I'm using two different kinds of rock here. I'm using the, this is the Carib Sea. That's an arch put sideways, and that's a small arch put sideways. And then these pieces are the Cornerstone Reef Rock, which is my new favorite. I just put two kind of base pieces on top of each other, and then this this piece on top. I actually think it turned out, uh, at first I was I was not at all happy with it. I don't know, I'm really happy with this scape. I have enough negative space in the front here. I like, I mean, I have space all around. I'm using that Reef Breeders RP-M for flow. I already had made this, this lid. This is like the best lid I've ever made. It's like this perfect fitting lid I already made. So overall, it's good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cycling it, but the ammonia is still at 2.0, so there's not much I can do. This is a weird system, this, this reef because it has both a rear filtration chamber with filter socks here, but then it also has full-size sump. So it, it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's a really clean looking tank, see what I mean? I mean, of course it's clean right now because there's no algae growing on it. Uh, with the new DC pump, which is totally silent, it's much easier to tune. That was my biggest complaint before was I couldn't get the water level right. But the water comes down to the first compartment right down here. I have a couple of these Eheim Jaeger heaters, one for primary, one for backup. I'm just using this Bubble Mega skimmer, which is not on right now because I'm cycling it. And then I had an extra UV sterilizer, so I just bought some new bulbs and I installed it here. This is the 15 watt classic. Same when I'm running on the seahorse tank. And I'm putting it on here because since it's going to be a fish only tank, I might as well give the fish as much protection as humanly possible. So I went ahead and just used some zip ties up here some cable ties and attach that brand new bulb on it. I'm not running it right now, obviously, because I'm cycling. And then the water flows over here into the back. And then there is the brand new pump, the new Reef Breeder Prism ATO right there. You can see it's it's a mess. Like when it comes to, to wires, I just have, this is like the Wave Maker. Uh, these are the LED light power units. I'm using this Bayite temperature controller here, this trip light back here, which is completely full. And then in the back here, I'm using a Wi-Fi outlet. So I don't know, it's it's full. I don't know, I, I think this fish only one will be really cool. It'll be relatively easy to maintain and I can put the lights super low. I think I'm gonna run them at like 15%. So the par levels are absorbent, absorbently, exorbitantly, not absorbitantly, exorbitantly low, hopefully low algae growth. I don't know. I mean, who knows? I mean, that, that, that brings me up to one, two, three, four, five tanks. And that's that's pushing the limit here. Harem tank adjustments. I don't I just don't know if, if the anemones are gonna do well or not. I pulled off the NEM guards because they were restricting the flow so much. So I pulled them off on both sides and I cranked up the flow as much as humanly possible. These anemones back here just don't get nearly as much flow just with how it, everything's set up. And there's definitely been some splitting happening. I don't know. I have readjusted the lights, which I know I swear over and over again that I'm not going to do. And what I did is I spread them out because I was getting these two lights were too close to each other here and here. So I was getting a really big hot spot here. And this is the coral, that, not the coral, the anemone. You see? see how it looks kind of crinkle, kind of like crinkle cut fries. And then they will kind of kink and then fall off. And it's definitely smaller than it used to be, but this was a really big hot spot, probably around 300 par. So I moved these out to the side so that the par distribution is way better. And then I also lowered their intensity. So I'm hoping that's gonna help overall. Then just a quick update on the reef tank. Sorry, the puppies are going crazy because the wife's getting home from Costco. This is that the protein skimmer I installed a couple weeks ago. And I mean, obviously it's working well. I mean, just take a peek there. See how nasty that skimmate is? You can see it's bubbling over a lot here. It's not able to keep down my nitrates and phosphates. And, and the reason is obvious, because just look how stocked I have the tank. Insanely stocked, and I know my lighting sucks, but sorry about that. I just have a ton of corals and four, five, six, six fish, brittle star. 
I don't know, I just have a lot in here. So I did just, you know, we saw earlier, put that GFO back in. I'm hoping that helps. I'm definitely getting some pockets of nuisance algae in here. But overall, this tank is looking actually pretty darn good. 